This is a detailed view of a mosquito's proboscis. The proboscis isn't just one tiny spear. It's a sophisticated system of six thin needle-like mouthparts called stylets, each of which pierces the skin, finds blood vessels and makes it easier for mosquitoes to suck blood. The actual mouthparts of a mosquito lies protected in a hairy shaft like the one seen here. You can also see the serrated edge of this needle. Only female mosquitoes bite people and animals to drink blood and can transmit malaria. A close-up view of a broccoli showing its epidermal cells. Epidermal cells include several types of cells that make up the epidermis of plants. Although they serve a number of important functions, their primary role is to protect from a variety of harmful factors, including microbes, chemical compounds, as well as ultraviolet light, among others. This six-legged living fossil is a springtail. It has internal mouth parts, so it is not considered an insect. It is blind and feeds on bacteria and decaying organic matter. And if it runs into a predator, it can flick its tail downwards to propel them away. Hence the name. These are the wing scales of a Ulysses butterfly, also commonly known as the Blue Emperor. Ulysses are large swallowtail butterflies found in Australia, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. Their size varies depending on subspecies, but typically their wingspan is about 5.5 inches. The upper side of the wings are an iridescent electric blue color and the underside is a more subdued black and brown. These colors are produced by the microscopic structure of the scales, a phenomenon called structural coloration. This is the surface of a toothbrush, and as we can see, it's covered in all kinds of different things. The objects seen in green are small rod bacteria. The red ball is candida yeast and the rest are epithelial cells. With its long thin head, the caddis fly larva lives by hunting. These larvas are equipped with spinnerets, and they use them in individual ways. Some of them spin a net across the water current and wait until prey gets caught in it. Others produce a long silk thread and lower themselves into the stream to hunt, as if dangling from a bungee cord. And at the end of their larval life, all of them spin a silk cocoon in which they can carry out their pupal stage. A heart capillary with red blood cell between muscle fibers. Capillaries are the small blood vessels including lymph vessels that make up the microcirculation of the human body. Their endothelial linings are only one cell layer thick. These micro vessels measure about 5 to 10 micrometers in diameter. They connect arterioles and venules and assist in the exchange of water, oxygen, carbon dioxide and many other nutrients and waste substances between the blood and the tissues surrounding them. Blood flows from the heart through arteries, which branch and narrow into arterioles and then branch further into capillaries where nutrients and wastes are exchanged. These capillaries then join and widen to become venules, which in turn widen and converge to become veins, which then return blood back to the heart through the great veins. Capillaries do not function on their own, but instead in a capillary bed, an interweaving network of capillaries. 
These are freestanding and self-aligned silica nanowires. Development of freestanding nanowire arrays is of technological interest for future energy conversion and energy storage devices. The silica nanowires are supported by a silicon wafer and still possess small indium droplets at their tips. Energetic ion bombardment and the unique growth energetics makes the silica wires appear as if they have grown naturally. Mediated by droplets of liquid indium, these nanowires emerge and grow several microns tall. This amazing picture shows a 5-day-old human embryo resting in the eye of a needle. A flame in the trachea. Flame is a secretion in the airway during disease and inflammation. Flame usually contains mucus seen here in pink with bacteria in purple, virus, other debris and slot of inflammatory cells. Sputum is mucus and is the name used for the cough of flame from the lower airways, the trachea and bronchi. The yellow objects seen here are ciliated cells and the pink objects are secretory cells. In medicine, sputum samples are usually used for naked eye exam, microbiological investigations of respiratory infections and cytological investigations of respiratory systems. Microbiological sputum samples are used to look for infections such as tuberculosis, pneumonia and influenza. The larva of a biting midge. These are very small insects which are only about 2 mm long. The adult males feed on plant juices while the females suck the blood of birds and mammals. There are several hundred species of aspergillus fungus and all of them form mold found on plants and starchy foods. They reproduce through spores at the end of stems. The fungus seen here is Aspergillus niger, which forms almost completely spherical spores radiating outwards from the tip of the stem. These are E. coli and rod-shaped bacteria on the bladder epithelial cells found in the urine sample from a patient with a urinary tract infection. The urinary tract is usually sterile, therefore the presence of any microorganism is termed a urinary tract infection. The main cause of urinary tract infections is E. coli. A stigma of a saffron flower, also known as Crocus sativus. Some 150 compounds in the stigma give saffron its pungent taste and hay-like fragrance. Saffron stigmas from each flower are hand-picked during autumn and quickly dried to be used either for cooking, flavoring or as a colorant. It takes about 210,000 of these stigmas from a football field's worth of crocuses to yield a pound of saffron. This is the reason saffron is the world's most expensive spice by weight. A synthetic microfiber cloth used to clean spectacle lenses. This nylon polyester composite contains bundles of extremely thin fibers that are partly split into individual strands. The wedge-shaped fibers are so thin that they can scoop up the fine layer of oil and dirt that accumulates on spectacle lenses, unlike other fabrics which merely spread the oil around. Their soft texture prevents scratching, which also makes them suitable for polishing coated plastic lenses.
a mosquito larva as a baby feeds on algae and other microscopic organisms. It spends most of its time at the water surface before pupating into an adult. A cross section of spinal root nerve bundle showing individual axons extensions of nerve cells. Spinal root nerves are bundles of nerves that connect the spinal cord, part of the central nervous system with the neural network in the rest of the body. Like all nerves outside the central nervous system, they are part of the peripheral nervous system. Axons are extensions of nerve cells, transmitting nerve impulses between the nerve cell bodies. This is the eye of a small dried shrimp pot from a grocery store. A section through the leaf of a black nightshade plant showing mesophyll cells containing numerous chloroplasts seen here as green round objects. Chloroplasts are organelles found in plant cells. They contain the pigment chlorophyll and are the site of photosynthesis, the process that synthesizes carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water using sunlight. These are the pollen grains of a geranium dissectum, also known as cutleaf geranium. They are native to Europe but can also be found on other continents as well, in some instances as introduced species. It commonly grows in fields, orchards, fine yards, woodlands and along roadsides. In United States they are considered invasive species in some states. <music> 